The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. Sports. Well, with former Bulls, Carlos Boozer and Joe Kim Noah, what a great era that gets overlooked in the last 25 years of the Bulls and the Derrick Rose times. I loved that squad. Uh, they were in the stands watching the Bulls beat the Heat 124 to 116. They won last night. And they also set a record, or at least a 27-year drought. The Bulls jumped out to a 33-8 lead in the first quarter. That's the biggest first quarter lead in 27 years. Want to know the last time that happened? That was January 31st, 1997 at Golden State. Michael Jordan made a jumper late in the opening period to give the Bulls a 27-point edge. Chicago went on to win 115-92 and won the NBA title that year. One of the last ones. Long time. Huh. Yeah. How about that? I don't know what to do with that stat. Uh, we'll just, just, just enjoy it. Just sit and enjoy it. I got to say, you know, Kenzie, would, would you say it's fair to say that we're not exactly enthused with the Bulls this year? Yes. Kobe White on the Bulls. Point yep. guard. Been of there the, for a few years the now. Yeah. Of the Bulls. Kobe White turning into one hell of a player. It's amazing. When you get Zach Levine out of that starting lineup, you see, oh, wait a minute. This team's not too bad. Well, that happens. You know, chemistry is a big thing. Mm, explain. Uh, because sometimes some other guys on the court, like you try to make a big three, let's say, or a big two, and there's a lot of egos in there. Kyrie Irving, a good example. Mm-hmm. Should have stayed in Cleveland. He goes to other teams. Everybody hates him. I Yes, Turned, I, I he, certainly do. And he was lovable on the, on the Cavs. Uncle Drew. I loved him, but I don't anymore. Not that I have no stake in him at all, but I'm just saying... It's good to appreciate what you have going on. Don't always think it's better when you move and join up with another big dog. I think it's, like, embarrassing. That's just me, though, when someone moves to an already stacked team. If you're on a team and it starts to become stacked, that's okay, right? Yeah. But when you hop over and are like, ooh, I got a ring, shut up. A la Kevin Durant. super, yes, very Durant-y. Yeah. Not cute. To walk around like, I got a ring. But like, you're, well, you, they were getting one anyways. That's like, <laughs> that's annoying. I, I agree with you a thousand percent. I hate that. And it's like, you should be like, I just, I understand that some teams like, but it's hard because they don't have the budget and they're never going to get one. I understand that the different things go into that, but how could you truly be proud Yes. Of like a team that would have gotten it without you and you just hopped over so you could have something shiny. Go buy a ring from a store or you're a millionaire. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> they auction them off all the time. Kevin Durant could have done that. Even we have the- a World Series ring. I didn't play. Oh. You have a World Series ring? hmm What? With our, with our, it was our family thing. Why don't you wear it around? Wear it around. I, if, I, if I had a World Series ring, I'd be wearing it around my neck, I think. Oh, uh, no. Why wouldn't you wear it around your finger? Uh, we got that. We got it engraved. I don't like things on my where, fingers. Where is it? Like in your home? Not that I'm going to rob you, but I'm just curious. Yeah, where you exactly won't believe is it? where this is. I'm assuming it's... You will it's... not believe where we have to have it. Let me take a guess. <laughs> where? Is it in the kitchen? No, it's on the mantle of the fireplace. Oh. That's where I would have it. In a case. I want... So we don't have our basement done yet. We have an unfinished basement, and that's... When you buy a home, it's it's in stages that you do the things you want to do. So mm. we finally got a patio after years and years and years in the back. Um, this year, our project was doing like a little front patio, like a mini one, right? Hopefully, within the next couple of years, a finished basement because there's a lot of Cubs stuff that needs a home. Yeah, <laughs> that's not on the main level. <laughs> it's not the living and room. We, we have stadium chairs in our bedroom. I gotta come over. This house and sounds I don't awesome. I want them there. Like, I think they're really cool, but like, not. Not like here. I want to like light candles. Like, so this sucks. so uh, we have talked about when we get the basement done. A lot. Well, uh, we will create very cool spaces for the things, and I would like to have it like a little. Ca- I go. You can put a light on it in a case. You can make this thing ridiculous, but I can't wait for it to be off the mantle. He got all like crabby. I'm trying to hang the stockings for children, <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, I attached to the ring. Can't see it as well." I'm like, "Okay, can we, are we not allowed stockings?" If it if it came between photos of children and a World Series ring, I'm choosing to display the World Series ring every time. Okay, wow. but we. I, that's why I can't wait to. And I've left let him keep it on the mantle. I understand it's his favorite thing. It's very nice of you. Ever. So I am I'm trying, but I cannot wait till we have, I'm display case it downstairs. I don't care. It can float in the air. It can levitate. I don't care. I'd like to hear from our listeners what they have like that of a special Chicago sports memorabilia thing and where it is in their house at 312 591 Like you have, you know, we got to the man cave, but. Your man cave is your family room, it sounds like. <laughs> it's, uh, many things have been put away. It's slowly, it's become a home for yeah. people yeah. instead of a museum. 
and my, it bothers my husband, and I'm like, well, then you need to hit like a bonus or something so we can do the basement if it bothers you because we are not just living in a shrine. There's a million men on our walls. Yeah. There's newspaper clippings of like, we have a framed newspaper clippings. This sounds awesome. And I'm like, I can't. This cannot happen. No, all, like, Megan all doesn't let me hang anything up in our apartment. Huh. I have all these pictures I want to hang with bands and stuff. Those can't go up either with athletes I or bands. I ruin our room. That's fine. Because I'm like, well, no one like, no one sees it. We're not like, come see our room. What do you come over? So I'm like, fine. <laughs> so he's ruined our room. We have a guest bedroom slash swing like studio. Right. Okay. That he's ruined. And then <laughs> we have um, we have a few items scattered like the ring and stuff. And then the rest is in the basement. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to come over. Uh, it sounds awesome. I want to see yeah. all that stuff. All right. Uh, last night, Monday Night Football, the Raiders beat the Chargers without Justin Herbert and Keenan Allen for the Chargers playing. Uh, Keen thing to note there. However, the score was 63-21. to 21. Now, these are Case's Chargers here because he That's likes Justin Herbert true. a lot. That's not true. I'm not a Los Angeles Chargers fan. <laughs> you like them. I like the, what, the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Los Angeles Chargers. Those are my teams. Those are it. So, here's the thing, Kenzie. I turned this on. I saw the score was bad, and I said, I'm not going to watch that game, the Raiders, Chargers, right now. It was 42 to nothing at half. At halftime, it was just like, what was going on? So they interviewed the coach, who should have been fired last year for the Chargers, Brandon Staley, when he blew a 30-point lead in the playoffs. Amen. A 30-point lead in the playoffs. He didn't get fired. Give him another year. Playoffs. He's like, I wasn't playing. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'd say. Oh, what do you Look at these idiots. <laughs> well, good point to say that, Kenzie. <laughs> That's what I would have said. I was not on the field. <laughs> Very good point to say because he was coming off the field at halftime, and the sideline reporter has to say, so how do you think the game's going? It's 42 to nothing. They talked to the Chargers coach, and here's what he says. Let's go to Kaylee. Brandon, how do you describe the performance of your team in the first half? This wasn't good enough. That wasn't us out there. <laughs> you know, did not come ready to play. You know, Second half, we got to fight for pride, but uh, it's a good group. We got to regroup at halftime. Come on, try to play a better second half. Who, who's calling? Shaggy over here. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> also, who calls him a good group when you're down 42 to nothing? Uh, you know, come on. I get it. You got to play another half with these well, guys. they but made it there. <laughs> they, they got, well, it, I can't believe he wasn't fired at halftime. The first coach in history to be fired at halftime should have happened. Absolutely, a thousand well, percent. What would that do for the team? If oh. you got hired at half, if you got fired at halftime, yes. What's gonna happen to the? Oh, if, he, if I saw my coach like that get fired at halftime, my nose an a hole, I'd go out there and start killing people. I'd be, so, I'd run through a wall for whoever. I don't care if they bring up the ball boy. I don't care what they do. Anybody. That guy is ridiculous. I cannot believe he still we has a job. We learned that not all the ball boys, and I'm pointing to Case right now, mm. are very talented. Mm. That's right. Got in the way. It's very in the way. <laughs> Excellent point. However, I do believe that the ball boy on the Chargers is better than their head coach. I'm sure. That's a low bar. <laughs> that is unreal. Uh, more going on in sports uh, with, let's go a little local here. North Central College in Naperville has a chance to win it all tonight. Again, a national championship run, Division Three football. I believe Ernie, the crew member, I think his daughter's on the band at North Central College. Shout out. So uh, you, I, I think it's on ESPN2 or something like that. I think it's on ESPN6. I don't know where it is, <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll find it. We'll put it up on Facebook. I didn't take a look where it was. But the 30th straight win against Cortland. Do you keep on... saying the wrong thing? Do what you thing? keep saying Monday night instead of Thursday night? What did, I, did I say Monday Night Football? I, we have a million texts, but like, I just I don't listen when you talk. Okay, so I'm no, not that's, sure. that's unfair. Yeah, I said Thursday Night Football. Maybe I said Monday Night Football. Fine. God, I don't answer everybody. Are you people going to really nitpick that? You're good. You're good. Come what, on. What about what about college sports? Oh, anyway, yeah, that game's tonight, North Central College. What's Sorry. tonight? What, what day of the well, week is it? Not necessarily tonight, but this weekend the college bowl game starts. So Saturday. Kenzie, you'll have games like the Myrtle Beach Bowl. I love the names of the bowl games over the weekend and early games, not the championship games. These aren't ones that mean that much, but it means a lot to the schools that are in it. Yeah, Kenzie, tell us if these bowl names sell us on you wanting to watch the game. The Myrtle Beach Bowl. Not knowing oh. the teams that are playing. Just oh, I love Myrtle Beach. Okay. okay. So you, you might watch that one. Maybe. It's Georgia, Georgia Southern and Ohio are playing in that oh. one. Oh. Two powerhouses. Um, you have the L.A. Bowl, formerly the Jimmy Kimmel Bowl. That's what it was called last year. Jimmy Kimmel Bowl. He yeah. used to have his own college football bowl game. Why? Because uh, that's awesome. If you have money, you get a college football bowl game. These that's all get, so weird. Yeah, the names all get bought just because a sponsor, probably ABC, bought it for him or whatever. But it's LA not. Bowl sounds like all of them, so I wouldn't go to that. Okay. Yeah, that's UCLA, Boise State. That happens on Saturday. How about this? It's the Bahamas Bowl, temporarily, temporarily renamed the famous Toastery Bowl. 
What? The famous toastery bowl. What toast, is that? What toast, is a toastery? The, uh, the famous toastery people bought the name over the Bahamas What bowl. is a toastery? I honestly, I was going to look it up. I don't know. I didn't have time to look it up. Fame with Fame, toasteries. Uh, it's not just a toaster? Um, I think it's actually like a Pop-Tart. Oh, I, hell yeah. I think it's a baked good. Bahamas Toasteries? and Pop-Tarts? Toastery, like T-O-A-S-T-E-R-Y. Yeah, when you type that in. The famous toastery bowl. Toastery. <laughs> <laughs> Like, nothing good's coming up. There's oh. restaurants named the Toastery. Hmm. Maybe it's poorly named. There we go. The, spon- well, the sponsor's not getting their message across. That's why they sponsor, so people will learn about them. I guess so. Huh. There's a restaurant called the French Toastery in Homewood, Illinois. Do you think they bought the bowl? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the high school teams are playing. <laughs> the Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. Right, and Kenzie on Q101 as we just did sports. Uh, correct myself on Ernie, our crew member with Brian and Kenzie on Q101 before we get those Limp Biscuit tickets. Yes, his daughter is in the color guard of North Central College's football team. So the national championship game tonight for Division Three. And Kay said it's on ESPN 6. That's not true. Uh, it's on ESPNU at 6 p.m. Make sure you watch. You Just know. so you know, we got a text. And yes. it's true. What's that? Ernie's wife, Mary, is also a crew member, Brian, and you've met her many times, so her <laughs> daughter is also doing this. And I... Mary, I love you, and I love that you are Ernie's wife. In fairness, wife. though, Ernie texted in saying, hey, so that I know that's why it was on top of your mind. Yes, yes. Well, but he... you got to stop forgetting about Mary. It's not nice. Uh, okay. There's just something about Mary. She's great. <laughs> you were just waiting to do that. <laughs> Oh, it's Friday. Uh, that's called the Stag Bowl, by the way. Would you watch the Stag Bowl, knowing it's called that, Kenzie? Stag. Stag. The Stag What's this, Bowl. What is this? Isn't that like a like a hunting term? Well, no. When you go stag, it means you're going without a date. That's that. Fra- that's the expression of that. I don't know what the stag like. Is stag as a company? I don't know. What is stag? I don't know. Maybe you got to Google that in the break here and find that one out. We already, we already looked up toastery. Yeah, which did not help. No. There's also the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. That's a bowl that game. That sounds fun. I love potatoes. <laughs> I, would go, I would go anywhere potatoes are. Uh, there's the Duke's Mayo Bowl. So many good bowl games coming up. The Pop-Tarts Bowl in Orlando. Uh, all these bowls. Uh, here's the best one, Kenzie. I didn't get to read to in the sports there. There's, there's the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl. So Frosted Flakes must have bought that one. Oh, yeah. that's fun. That Where will, is it? And that's uh, that's going to be in El Paso, Texas. That's actually Notre Dame and Oregon State. That's not uh, till next Friday, that bowl game. So make sure you do that. But the Stag Bowl tonight, our locals in Naperville, whoop, whoop. Let's go. Let's do it. Okay. Right now, 312-591-8300. You want Limp Biscuit tickets? You got to beat Kenzie in trivia. Call now. 312-591-8300. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. You can't defeat her. She's too powerful. With Kenzie. <laughs> Let the battle begin. Q101. Let's go. Friday edition of Clash with Kenzie. Limp Biscuit tickets on the line, and Sean's going for them. Uh, Sean checking in from Chicago. Tell us something really quick about yourself, Sean. Uh, I like camping in the summer. There's nothing sweeter than the sweet uh, crackle, crackle sound of a bonfire. Oh, that's like a dating profile. <laughs> I like that fun fact. Have you ever been camping, Kenzie? Um, I do outdoorsy things, and then I like to go in a house afterwards. So that's glamping, then, right? Like I, I don't know. I've seen it in like log cabins and stuff, but I, I do. I, I make a mean bonfire. Okay, I like the crackle, crackle too. I'm with you, Sean. I, I have mountain <laughs> climbs and hiked and done all sorts of stuff, and then like gone to my. My home. I don't want to. Go to the Four Seasons in Hammond. I don't want to <laughs> sleep Hammond. outside after. <laughs> well, I'm with you. I'm afraid to sleep in a tent where you can't lock the door. It's not fear. That's not why. I, I'm not scared of it. I am. I'm just. I know I'm going to be uncomfortable. I'm going to toss and turn the whole night. I toss and turn it in a bed. <laughs> I'm be too tired to do all the stuff the next day. I mean, I can't. since the Blair Witch Project, I can't be alone in the woods. I would, l- oh my God, can we send him with like a GoPro and he's to camp one night? Oh He'd my just God. Lose it. it would be like the office episode where Michael Scott goes into the wilderness. He'd be tearing <laughs> off his clothes for no reason. <laughs> He'd be eating poisonous <laughs> mushrooms. I have told you guys my toxic trait, though, is that I fully believe I would do amazing on the show alone. 
Oh, yes. I think I'd win. Yeah, well. I do. Naked the, and afraid, survivor alone, anything like that, I get to you doing very well. I in. really want clothes. I yeah. really don't want to do the I first cannot one. see her doing well on like, Naked and Afraid. I'm not saying, I'm not afraid. saying I want you on Naked and Afraid. I just think if the circumstances happened, <laughs> you'd do well. I, know. I just, I, that one I don't like as much. <laughs> but <laughs> I think I'd crush alone with when a jacket. <laughs> when Ant's getting the cracks, I don't, I'm not doing that. Oh my God, what is with you? What do you mean? That's what the show is half the time. Ants you... in the cracks. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they should call it. That's what it is half the time. <laughs> They're <laughs> ratings would be a lot better. Too much man ass too in that in that show. <laughs> way, way too much man ass. Sean, do you think there's too much man ass and naked and afraid? <laughs> Never seen a single episode. I oh, didn't tell you. Hey, there's a lot of man ass in it. You know what? Well, Brian keeps going back for more, even though it's all man ass. Yeah. Apparently, I, I just think I think this is the episode where we're gonna finally get it right, <laughs> and then they don't do it. God, I'm sorry. It's not a sexual fantasy for you. It's just con- it's a competition about living in the wilderness. Sure, it is. Oh my God. All right, Sean, the camper. Uh, here we go. Uh, First one to five wins. Listen carefully. If Kenzie gets one wrong, you can steal a point. You can do the same to her. Call heads or tails in the count of three. One, two, three. Call it. Kenzie can go first. Oh, oh. snap. Oh. This is like a date. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kenzie. Uh, which U.S. state is nicknamed the Wolverine State? The Wolverine? The Wolverine State. I'm going to say Minnesota. It's not Minnesota. Because they have the Timberwolves. Uh, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's not a Wolverine. <laughs> well, same, you know, slightly adjacent. Are they friends? I don't know. Same concept. Uh, Sean, do you know? I believe it's Michigan. Michigan. Go blue, baby. Talk oh, about the ball games. Close. <laughs> uh, Sean, what does the abbreviation DVD stand for? Digital video display? No, but a good guess. Kenzie, do you know this? I do, and I'm excited. Don't tell me you know this. I think, well, I think it's right. Okay. It may not be. I was pretty good okay. talking about Minnesota. <laughs> so, I think it is digital, uh, it's digital versatile disc. Right? Holy crap, it is. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, how do you know that? I don't know. It's one of these, one of these useless facts you have? I'm useless. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. All right, that was a great save. Wow, all right. Well, one-to-one back to Kenzie. Mm. Uh, Kenzie, what is Indiana Jones searching for in the movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade? Holy that- Grail. Oh, crap. I love Indiana Jones. <laughs> oh, you'd sleep with him, right? If well, you were single. I mean, I don't know. It feels wrong. I cover my son's ears and my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Let's not, let's not answer that one. Can't hear that. <laughs> Sean. Sean, uh, what TV network is known for its Peacock logo? NBC. NBC is right. Two to two. WNBC. Oh, that's very funny. <laughs> very good. Uh, Sean. Oh, no, no, Kenzie. Kenzie. Uh, spokesman Vince no, Offer. Wait a minute. No, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Sure, sure. It's Kenzie's, right? Sean, Sean got the last question right. It's back to Kenzie. WNBC. Two to two. Sean, you did the whole thing. WNBC. Uh, Kenzie. Yeah. Spokesman Vince Offer promoted what absorbent towel in the late 2000s? I only know of one famous towel, so I'm just going to say Sham Wow. Sham Wow is oh. right. I know you wanted that one, right? Oh, that was such, those were so great. I wanted to buy, I never bought one. But I, the commer- I know they're great. <laughs> I don't know. The commercial was so great. You're right, Dave. I didn't, didn't get the payoff. Didn't buy them. <laughs> Sean, you ever own a Sham Wow? I have. I'm, I never bought one, but I'm familiar with them. Yeah. yeah. See, uh, did anybody buy one? Ever? That's what I'm wondering now. <laughs> I think we all just watched. One in the morning. <laughs> like, this commercial is awesome. Yeah. I, I felt uh, like I needed one to say that. I know. All right, three to two, it's back to Sean. Uh, Sean, which pop star recorded the song Skater Boy and I'm With You in the mid-2000s? I'm just a skater boy. Is that Avril Lavigne? It is Avril Lavigne. Good hey, job. Later, boy. He wasn't good enough for her. I love Avril Lavigne. First concert. Wonderful. Avril Lavigne? Well, first concert without my parents, I should say, because my parents brought me to, like, a lot of rock concerts. Like old school, like like I went to like Journey, Sticks, Ario Speedwagon, John <laughs> Mellon Camp at a young age, but then Avril Lavigne was my first one, like without my parents. And what happened? It was it was very fun. Yeah. It was when her hair was blonde and pink. Oh, that's fun. It oh. was a good time. Yeah. Look that's good that. stuff. All right, three to three. And back to Kenzie. Uh, Kenzie, who besides Britney Spears did Madonna kiss at the 2003 VMAs? Uh, Christina Aguilera. Christina Aguilera is right. Which is just so forgotten, and she's so hot. So it's like, why would you forget about that kiss? 
I think, no, not enough emphasis on that one. Was that a little weird that Madonna was kissing both of them? I mean, just in the, as far as it looked like their mom? Um, I don't think they're... What's the age difference? Like 30? No, no, 20. 20-some 20 20 years. 25 years. Because Britney just turned 40, and I think Madonna's 65. Hmm. 25 years. I can't believe you knew that without looking it up. <laughs> you didn't know who Stan was a few minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Holy oh, crap. Oh, I did a deep dive on that one. Oh, my God. Yeah. That is, oh, wow. I still got that on a VHS tape somewhere. That was, I mean, I thought that would be a rhetorical situation. Yeah. All right. I got the bootleg uh, disc. Ver, di, you got di- the director's cut. Yeah, what was the got- DVD again? The DVD? Digital versatile disc. I, did, I, did, I bought it at a gas station. Of the in, Kiss? In Stromberg. Yeah, uh, Stromberg. Yeah, it's up there. Strong, what is going on? Are you <laughs> stroke? I'm just getting excited when I hear about that kiss. Oh, my God. You're sweating. All right. It's four to three, and it's back to Sean. Sean, in the famous logo, what is the Morton Salt girl holding in her right hand? An umbrella. An umbrella's right. Four to four. Next one wins. Oh, man. This is... <laughs> I should have gone first. Uh, <laughs> you made a huge mistake. I mean, I got the first one wrong. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> no. So we're going to Kenzie on this. Yeah. Kenzie. What? <laughs> FIFA is the sanctioning body for what sport? Soccer. Oh, <laughs> Sean, I didn't think she'd know. I'm sorry. Man. My son loves soccer. I've had to deal with that. Since. Oh, man. It's okay. We're going to hook Sean up, though. He's still going to go. Are we? Yep. What? Yeah. Oh, I love Sean. Right. <laughs> He's yeah. one of the best dates I've ever been on. He's been so nice to me. <laughs> What's our second date when I take you to see Corey Felton? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm excited about it. You shut up, Brian. You're just jealous. <laughs> I gotta admit, I am kind of jealous you're going with Sean because he sounds like fun. He is fun. Sean, you're going to see Limp Biscuit from Brian and Kenzie yes! and Q101. Yes, 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 yes. You guys rock. The Q101 Morning Cruise Clash with Kenzie on Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Yeah, about seven minutes away from Limp Biscuit tickets, 8 a.m. here. And today, maybe you have a first date plan or maybe you have a special, special date plan with the wife or the girlfriend or the boyfriend or whoever. Um, might want to change your plans. Today is the most sexless day of the year. I'd like to point out mm. that you're saying. Cancel your plans with your wife because you may not get laid <laughs> after. God forbid you have a nice evening. It's just uh, enjoying each other's personalities. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying my point. Ugh. Thank you, Kenzie. It was very nice of you to do that. Oh, boy. <laughs> Cancel plans. I mean, why, why, just see, so you know. Let me just say. You're not going to get what you're really there for. It's why, nice. Why go out if that's not at the end? Just right. spend time with your significant other. Be around somebody you enjoy. <laughs> hmm. Okay, I never thought of that that way. That's Interesting. nice. Today's the most sexless day of the year, and... It will be for you, because I know she <laughs> listens. So I would imagine you're here to... A self-fulfilling prophecy, aren't you? <laughs> now, you just made sure of it. Now, if you remember, Kenzie brought to the table on Monday, that day was the biggest breakup day of the year. Yes. Uh, because everybody doesn't... If you go two weeks out from Christmas and New Year's, you don't look like the biggest well, scumbag. Well, the plans are... Here, no, no, no. It's not that. It's that the plans are starting to get made. So it's like, whose house or what family are we celebrating Christmas with? And do I have to get you a gift? And are we each other's midnight kiss on New Year's? And then they're like, whoop. When you're not... Because if you show up with so, somebody somewhere on New Year's, if you meet them out, it's different. But if you yeah. show up, New Year's Day, post the kiss, like things become real, right? Yeah. Or families at Christmas time. Those things... This is when your relationship becomes solidified, and everyone knows right directly around that corner is Valentine's Day. Oh boy! So some people are like, "This is my time to this is my time to leave." <laughs> and you can't wait till Christmas Eve to do it, so you got to do it about two weeks out. So Monday was the biggest breakup day of the year, and today's mm-hmm. the most sexual day of the year. Related a little bit to Monday, where everybody breaks up, so you're not having a chance to get any. Um, also, there's something I apologize for the baby vulgarity of the way this is said, but this is a doctor saying this. It's a, a phenomenon right now in mid-December called winter vagina. I'm sorry to say it like that, but there's no other way to say it. There's a couple ways to say it. I wish you would have run it by me. Okay, tell me another way to say it right now. I, I could have brainstormed a little bit earlier. I know I didn't give you a heads up. I'm sorry. You did not uh, at all. But on the top of your head, do you have another way to say that better? I would have said, um, 
like winter <laughs> female parts or something. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> that's not as fun, right, Case? No, no. I like the way you said it, Brian. Okay. Um, could you, without saying it again, I will could not. you describe what it is? A uh, drop in the temperature makes, you know, skin and hair dry, dehydrated, and just people generally don't feel in the mood for those things where their body feels right now because of the temperature. You know what? Yeah, because it's like, do you want to take your clothes off? Like, I'm awesome. freezing. <laughs> wait, you know what I mean? Wait, wait, wait. Like, wait. it's wait. so cold. <laughs> wait, are you talking about you or me or Casey like, or a, anybody? Like a, like a general question. Like, who's... Yeah. Who wants to do that? It is so chilly. <laughs> I, I wore fuzzy socks. Last, like, it is it is chilly. And when's the last time you washed those fuzzy socks? Are the germ traps well, in there? They were fresh because I haven't had to... Like, now the cold really kicked in. Yeah, that's what I mean. It, it's starting to get, you know... Even though it's been pretty mild for a winter in Chicago so far, except for, like, one couple days here and there, but it is starting to get more consistently it's, cold. Now it's like, okay, it's winter, well, and it's so chilly. But by December, by mid-December... It's been kind of cold a little bit through November and even September, October, I mean, and parts of that. So by now, your body is finally getting dried out, dehydrated, and doesn't really crave that right now. So that's what's going on. It tied in with December 11th being the biggest breakup day of the year. You don't have anybody to sleep with. Yeah. So is it, whole... Can I make a recommendation for you to want to get naked more? Oh, I got to hear this. Um, sure. And this is coming from Case, the producer, <laughs> by the way. Flannel sheets. Warm. We have that. We have UGG flannel sheets. Oh, excuse <laughs> me. I didn't we know I was talking to a Rockefeller. Friday, wow. And it was, they are delightful. Uh-huh. Uh, my life will never be the same. Because you, you don't have to warm up the sheet. Mm. It's warm. Oh, it's that's so amazing. Do you have flannel sheets, Brian? I don't like flannel sheets. I like to be cooler in bed. I don't like to be like. I, know, I mean, he's just making sure. He doesn't get any. <laughs> Every time he says something. No, yeah, no, just... our bed's made out of ice. Yeah. Yeah, we well, sleep. that'll do it. And I throw rusty nails in the bed, too, <laughs> yeah. before I lay down in there. I bet. Yeah. You think sleeping should be a challenge. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do not like flannel sheets. And it's just, like I said, it's just the, the texture. I don't know. I don't like to be too warm. I like to be cool. You still like a Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> I do not like them, Sam. I am. <laughs> Jeez, calm I down. I do not like them in the bed or in the house <laughs> or with a mouse. <laughs> don't like any of them. <laughs> in case that I will be toasty. That's right. Wait, so you have UGG flannel sheets. Mm-hmm. Now, I could kind of go. I'm just curious what the price of those are. We got them on sale. We uh, would never have them. Of course price. you did. I am a bargain hunter. I'm actually, I would, I'm not cheap, but I really, really hate buying something that's not on sale. Are these the Kulabura by UGG flannel sheet set? I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> Um, uh-huh. flannels. Is it's this like, what you got me for Christmas? No. Can it be what you got me for <laughs> Christmas? <laughs> Wait a minute. These are on sale at Kohl's right now for $42. Boom. That's pretty cheap. But uh, but I see other ones like, at, you know, $149. Depends yeah. on, I guess, where you no, go. No, we definitely got ours much more affordable than that. I think we got a twofer on the sale also hmm. on top of it. What do you do with the other ones? Give them the case. That's his present. Well, when you wash them. <laughs> <laughs> I got to wash them. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, there you go. You're, are you saying that helps, though, in the relations, having a nice, warm, toasty flannel sheet bed to jump into? I, I think so, because you're not, like, shaking, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, your teeth don't chatter. Uh-huh. How's that again? That's not good. <laughs> I, my teeth do chatter when I'm cold. I, like, it's not good. I, I sound like one of those little wind-ups that, like, you sh- all shake on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> Have your teeth ever chattered when you hook up with somebody? If it's chilly... Okay. If it's chilly, I'm going to chatter. Do you mean That's because it. you actually made someone feel so emotional and passionate that their teeth chattered? No. No, my, he means cold. Facts. My, no, my teeth chatter because I've been so nervous being with people that I can't stop shaking while I'm undressing them. Good Lord. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. You shake? I have before. Well, why don't you ask them to undress themselves then? Oh, that's not sexy. Oh, yeah, but you're scared. Well, like neither a is your... <laughs> you're doing it yourself. It's not sexy. You're shaking, <laughs> trying to get a bra off. It's, yeah, it's seriously. <laughs> Good lord. I, I would imagine. How long does it take you to get a bra off? Okay, is that has to be an experience. I've never been good at it. <laughs> I bet. And I love the like the bra as a sensual item. Like I love it. I'm into it. Can't get it off. My girl knows she's going to undress herself. We were at that point in the relationship. I don't need to fake it anymore. Oh, yeah, sorry. Wrist a little sore. I was working out all day. Can't can't get it right. Never been good at it. Do you shake when you undress yourself? (laughs) 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 The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101.